what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? He's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh... You're here, and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up, too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. 
to that house outside our window. See how huge it is? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle served kitchry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Uh, uh. Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire. It's over there. Enough. You don't know when to stop fire. I'm not joking this time. Please believe me, it's there. Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look, he even used smoke this time. No, Simka, that smoke's from a fire. Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth. I swear I'm not lying. This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here. Tula, Simka, turn off the soldering iron. Uh-huh. Got it. Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher. <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin, and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right. Where's the fire? Oh. <clears throat> Fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> not at all, colleague. If not for you, Fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. 
Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> Hi there, Tom Thomas. Why has this mirror been standing here in the hallway for a whole week already? My dad can't seem to find any time to hang it on the wall. Are you sure it won't fall? It hasn't fallen so far. So, Nolik, do I look like Spider-Man? Ah! No, you don't look like him at all. Yeah! You can't climb on walls like Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I can do it. Just give your chewing gum to me. See that? Like in the movie. Oh, like that's really hard. Just keep watching. <laughs> 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 what the only spider fixie in the whole wide world can do. could see their reflection was to look into water. The very first mirrors appeared about 5,000 years ago. They were made out of silver or bronze. Legend has it that the Greek scientist Archimedes once burned down an entire enemy fleet with the help of mirrors like these. But humans only became able to see their reflections well after they started making mirrors out of glass. And we still use glass mirrors today. But of course, mirrors are not only used for looking at our reflections. They are also used in telescopes to collect the light of distant stars. And humans also use mirrors inside of automobile headlights so they will shine even brighter. Just look at all the things mirrors can do for you. Whew. Looks like it didn't break. Help me lift it so we can lean it back up on the wall. I've gotten a reflection in the mirror. That's impossible, because only vampires can't see their reflections. Or ghosts. But I'm not in there. So then, I guess you've become a ghost. <laughs> no, not a ghost. I don't like them. Hey, what's all the racket? Did you guys get yourself into trouble again? Suka, me and Tom Thomas were playing Spider-Man. And I, I turned into a ghost for some reason. Yeah, a ghost. <laughs> That's silly. They don't even exist. Oh, you don't have any reflection either. Simka, you're a ghost just like I am. <gasps> That's just goofy. Look, just look, here I am. Well, hi there. But why couldn't I see myself over here? It's probably because the mirror is scratched on the back. Tom Thomas, do you think you can rotate the mirror? It's just like I said. Some of the special coating got scraped off of the back. A mirror is not just a piece of plain glass. Plain glass lets light pass through it. But a mirror reflects light. To turn a piece of glass into a mirror, people spray a special shiny coating on one of its sides that reflects everything. And then to protect the shiny coating, an extra layer of paint is put on top of it. But even with that protection, you still have to handle mirrors carefully. Because mirrors can easily scratch or even break. And do you think that this one is possible to fix? Yeah, we can do it. It's a good thing you have a pack mat with you. I thought we might need it after you started screaming over here. Don't tell me you've got paint in there for a mirror. A pack of mats got everything you'll ever need. Ooh. 
It's all ready. <gasps> My dad's coming. Tom Thomas, what are you doing here? Checking if you hung it. Yeah, right. I'll definitely hang that mirror on the wall soon. Hmm, like tomorrow. Or next week. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack of mat. All right. <laughs> Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack of mat, all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil oh, slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow! Talk about no friction. Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew! We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look! What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what 
good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey, look what I've got for you. Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep, now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. What you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Mm. Ugh. with fire, because just one match or little piece of smoldering coal can lead to a huge disaster. Yes, they can make a whole forest burst into flame and burn down to the ground. And all because of a simple chain reaction. I don't get you. What chain reaction? What do you mean, Nolik? Tantanus was rude to you, then you were rude to Simka, then Simka was rude with me. So there it is, a chain reaction. Yeah, and the rudeness was like a little spark. It just spread and spread and spread like a forest fire. Will you forgive me, Simka? Yeah, all right. I've got an idea. Why don't we try starting our very own chain reaction the other way around? What do you mean? Well, instead of spreading angry and rude feelings, we could spread happiness. But how? It's simple. All we need to do is smile and say nice things to each other. What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood! And I know how! Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity in hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. They're all done. Nolik, bring them in. <laughs> and now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! So 
totally awesome. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. <sighs> it's about me. Pixies? It's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <sighs> Chusaka, I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. That's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Atta girl, Chusaka. Well done. 
What a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog What's of ours. Whoa! Finally, they understand me. Ah!